Proverbs, the 423, today is Communion Sunday. We're going to be partaking of communion. 423 says, guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart above all else. Guard your heart above what? All else. Is there anything you should be guarding more than your heart? According to this scripture. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That is the word of God. Luke, you see, uh, I get up here, I, 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 I'm preaching to you. I, I'm just putting the things that God puts in my heart and passing them on to you. But this is God's word. This is not Pastor Darrell getting up there and preaching a message. This is God's word. Guard your heart above all else. It is very plain. It's very simple. Guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. People's lives are cut short because they don't guard their heart. I said people's lives are cut short because they don't guard their hearts. Luke 6.45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth fruit, which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For, out of, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. And Jesus told us in, in Mark the 11th chapter, he said, you, you, what he said was, you will have what you say. So we have to guard our heart because it's out of the heart that the mouth speaks. Are you listening? My brother and sister, in the grand scope of time, we're living in the last minutes of the last days. I mean, if this was a football game, and I've said this before, I believe that we've all been, already been given the two-minute warning. If you know football, in the last, at, at the end of the game, when the two-minute mark hits, the referees stop the game and they say, there's two minutes left in this game. There's 120 seconds left in this game. And I believe in the grand scope of time. Let's turn to 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. Communion Sunday. I'm reading out of the King James. This know also. You know, Timothy was the pastor of Ephesus, which was the, the largest church in the world at that time. But there came a tremendous persecution against him and against that church in Ephesus. They flourished, but then there came a tremendous persecution, and Paul wrote to encourage Timothy. And he said, This know also, that in the last days, perilous, I think the Passion Translation says fierce, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. What have I been preaching about for the last month? Being thankful. But in the last days, people, society as a whole, will be unthankful. Unthankful and unholy. I believe there's a, there is a tremendous tie between thankfulness and holiness. And there's a tremendous tie between being unthankful and unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. This scripture characterizes the mindset of society in the day and age that we're living in. Every one of these characteristics is prevalent right now. I said it's prevalent right now. And my brother and sister, it's imperative. 
and I say this with the greatest urgency and the strongest caution that we guard ourselves. We guard our hearts. We guard our eyes. We guard our minds. We guard our children against this prevalent mentality that is in a large part taken over the culture. Taken over the world. And I believe that all these things fall under what I call the entitlement mentality. The entitlement mentality. Stand guard and do not give in to this mindset. Don't give in to it. Do not allow floating ethics or morals into your life. I said, don't allow it. Society is trying to convince the world and believers that morals and ethics change with time. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This world word was true when it was written, and it's still true today. This is the only absolute truth. I said this is the only absolute truth. The Bible. Amen? And churches, there are modern churches that say they're Christians, and they say you don't even, you know, don't bring your Bible. To church, because you're just, you're being religious. Oh, you, you may scare people away if you carry this big Bible into church with you on Sunday. Don't speak in other tongues, because you might frighten people. My wife got saved because somebody spoke in other tongues and, and, and interpreted it. My wife gave her life to the Lord that day, the first time we ever heard that. Tongues is for the unbeliever. Tongues should be prevalent in the church. It's not scary. It's not spooky. It's supernatural and it's real. My brother and sister, the Bible was, is, and always will set the bar for the moral and ethical standards in this world. Society thinks that fi fixed ethics and morals are outdated. Is this tickling your ears at all? <laughs> but it's the truth. We've got to guard our hearts against this thing. We need to ask ourselves, are we sticking to the Bible standards? Do we even know what the Bible says about things like abortion and homosexuality? Or have we just allowed our standards to float along with society? God loves everybody. He, he, God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. You and I have been there. I mean, my daily Bible reading today was Romans chapter 1. It just, plainly, it just plainly tells you what God's stance is on homosexuality, transgenderism, and all that stuff. God said he created us male and female. That's it. That's it. He didn't create anything in between. But churches have just, well, we don't want to offend anybody. Dear Lord, Jesus offended everybody that followed him at one time or another. In fact, he turned, everybody left him one time. He turned his 12 disciples and said, what are you, you guys going to go to? It's not popular. It's the truth. It is the truth. Just read Romans chapter, chapter 1. If you got the Passion Translation, read it out of that. And you'll know exactly where God stands on these things. And he loves the homosexual. He wants to get them delivered. Get them set free. He loves them. 
He loves the adulterer. <laughs> Wants to get them delivered and get them set free. But he hates sin. And Jesus died for that sin. Basic principles of the Bible should be fixed in our hearts and in our minds. Should be fixed. Be careful not to be duped by a deceived world in these last days. We've got to guard above all else, above everything, we need to guard ourselves so that we're not deceived. The Bible says there's going to be a falling away at the end of the age. I thank God for everybody that shows up here. Because it'd be real easy over the last year and a half to say, you know what? My church is going to be in front of that little tube or big screen. And that's not what God designed church to be. This is a hands-on experience. This is a, a relational experience. I've said it time and time and time and time again, but in Jesus' day, people went to church to get healed. Now, society's trying to tell us, stay away from church because you're going to get sick. No, I'm serious. I pray every, every week, Lord, I, I plead and apply because I have faith in the blood. I, I apply, I draw a bloodline around this property. I said I draw a bloodline around this property. I apply the blood over this property by faith, and then I remind it, God, you said in your word that there would no evil befall us and neither would any plague come nigh us. And so, Lord, I pray that you give your angels charge over the bloodline and that your angels stand guard over this bloodline and no coronavirus, no Delta variant, no Omni whatever variant can cross that bloodline because, Father, because you said your angels would protect us and lift us up in their hands. And so I pray that every person that comes to church will leave feeling better than when they came. Because the word of God is alive and full of power. Amen? But the truth of the matter is, is we are living in a day and age where you can't let just two hours on Sunday morning be all the word you get. No, it's the truth. You can't allow just these two hours. This is where we come in together. Oh, my. Yeah, I just read in Romans that uh, when we get together like this, every... Just by getting together like this, we encourage one another. We build up, we help grow everybody, each other's faith. It's just amazing what happens. So we don't want to be deceived by, uh, duped by, and by a deceived world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Our generation is witnessing the effects of seducing spirits that have caused society and many in the church to disconnect from the moral standards that were once just held common in our society. I'm 65 years old. When I was a kid, you didn't even hear of homosexuality. I mean, you just didn't hear about it. When I was a kid, you could set, let your kids go out and play and you didn't even have to worry about them. My mother used to just, we'd get up in the morning, we'd get dressed, in the, especially in the summertime, and my mom would look at us and go, get out of the house. She didn't want us in her hair. She needed some peace and quiet. And she'd kick us out of the house, and she'd say, don't come back till lunchtime. <laughs> we'd go back, we'd eat our lunch, and then she'd kick us out of the house, say, don't come back till supper, till your father gets home. <laughs> and then we'd have supper. I don't know how we made it. 
I don't know how we made it. I swung on vines up in the mountains. <laughs> we went down to the river and played in the Susquehanna River and fished and did stuff. We, you know, invented games. Rode a, we had a big sand pit down at the end of the street. You could jump into the sand, you know, and it was just like, this is cool. You jump off a cliff. You know how kids are. And then we got the idea, hey, we could ride our bikes off this thing. <laughs> oh, we, yeah, we had a few broken bones, but you know what? It was fun. <laughs> but I, what, what, you didn't have to worry about some pervert being out there right. and, and doing something heinous with your children. You sent them out, and it's a different world. It is a different, you can't do that today. Be irresponsible to do that today because our society has changed. It's changed, and don't be deceived. Defund the police. I don't know about you, I was taught we respected the police. You honored the police, and you just did what they told you to do. You just did what they told you to do. And if you did, you didn't get in trouble. You didn't have any problem. I know there could be bad police out there, but for the most part, I thank God for, every, for all of them. I just think it's ridiculous. Oh, but it's okay to, to rob and loot and burn biz, people's businesses and livelihoods down. That's okay. It's kind of what they call backwards. Isn't it? Isn't that, a, isn't that turned upside down from what the Bible would say? The Bible says pray for those that are in authority. The Bible says that police officers are appointed by God to, to keep the peace in society. Yeah, we got, we got a, a whole group of society that's buying into this junk. We are the light, my brother and sister. We are the salt of the earth. And if we've lost our light and we've lost our saltiness, what do they got to look for? If, if we're going to go down the same path as them, we're just deceiving our, whole, our own selves about all this stuff. Jesus is the standard. That's what we're striving for. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And we should never stop living our life. We, sh we should always be trying to correct ourselves. Always be trying to grow our faith. Are you listening to me? And we should always be guarding our heart above everything else. That we don't allow this evil, this evil mentality, this entitlement mentality that's in society to creep into our lives. I don't know about you, but I don't deserve anything that God has given me. I don't deserve, you can't earn it. And I certainly don't deserve it. But, I'll, but God has provided it freely by his love and his grace, and all you have to do is trust him to reap all the benefits that he's provided for you. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's only one thing in the world that'll keep every hint of deception out of your life, and that's the Word of God. We ought to be so full of the Word that anytime we hear anything, uh, 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 anything that's deceiving, anything that's a lie, anything that's not the truth, something should just rise up in us. Something should just scratch us down here like, there are, there's, that ain't right. There's something wrong with this. And then we need to say, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. 
The Bible says very plainly, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is the Lord of healing. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe this with all my heart. I believe there is no... Have you ever taken medicine? Yes, I've taken medicine. My wife and I were talking, though. Neither one of us is on a prescription except for this one. It ain't because I'm in perfect shape. It ain't because I am genetically superior. You know, I think a lot of you laughed a little too much right there. But there's one thing, God is no respecter of persons. His word is no respecter of persons. And if you will work the word of God, the word of God will work for you. And I said, my wife and I, I love it. I'll look over and she's sitting in the recliner with her little BI-12. And I listen to her read the word of God. And she listens to me when I read it. Because I read it a lot more louder than she does. <laughs> Why? Because I want the devil to hear it. I said I want the devil to hear it. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing things clearly for his benefit. Because I, I believe in it. Hallelujah, we should be so full of the word of God that we hear any deception, anything that goes against the word of God, our spirit just cries out, no! Amen. Looking dapper, Zach. <laughs> Don't be contaminated by the spirit of this age. If people disagree with your stance on the word of God. I said if people disagree with your stance on the word of God. Don't allow their hostility or their perceptions to disturb you. Amen. Amen. Because Amen? Amen. people won't understand it. They'll say you're narrow minded. They'll say uh, you're contrary. You're, you're non-compliant. You're intolerant. I just look at him and smile. I, I mean, the truth of the matter is, I am very narrow-minded. Jesus said the way is narrow that leads to life. I am contrary, because I'm contrary to this world standard. I am non-compliant, and I am very, very, very intolerant of any of the devil's lies. I am. I love people. The love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. I love people, but I want to see them get out of this deception. I want to see them know the truth. I want to see them come into the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? Amen. We're free. We are free. We live. We, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above. Far above this world standards. That's the word of God. We just have to believe it. And be strong and bold about it. I said and be strong and bold about it. My brother and sister, are we willing to pay the price to hold fast to the truth? I said are we willing to pay the price to hold fast to the truth of God's word, no matter how the world or how other brethren that are in the world ridicule us. Do you know there can be brethren that are in the world? We need to be very careful what we allow in our ears and in our eyes. We need to be very careful. What do you do? 
when you're with somebody you hear foul language or a dirty joke. Many Christians have turned to a foul mouth. I don't know about you, but if I say a bad word, a curse word, immediately my conscience is pricked. And I just need to repent of it. But I've heard Christians say, well, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You know, you don't, if, if you don't curse, you got a religious spirit. <laughs> Come on, Ray. Ray said, yeah, you do with the Holy Spirit. I think the opposite way. I think, you know what? If you're, if you're given to that kind of a mouth and you're allowing your tongue to spew that garbage, maybe you've given over to an unclean spirit. This is true. I'd rather be filled with the Holy Ghost. Guard your heart with all diligence, for, for out of it flow the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. If you're spewing those words, then what is your heart full of? It's full of the same words you're speaking. Full of life or full of death. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. Be very careful what you're watching and listening to on TV. I said be very careful. Be very careful. Be very careful what you're watching and listening to. The devil is so subtle. Well, I like that program. But they slide in those naked sex scenes or that language or whatever. It ain't worth your heart. It isn't worth allowing that defiling spirit to get in. It ain't worth it. Thank you, Pastor Darrell, for making us so happy today. If you got children, then closely and carefully look at what you're allowing to go into their precious eyes and ears. I grew up, my brother and I woke up every Saturday morning and we turned the TV on to a, what did they call that thing? No. Came on. Not, not, the channel wasn't on yet. It was the test pattern. We turned on the TV and there was a test pattern and a noise going. And we sat there and watched. Because we knew that in about a half an hour, as soon as, the, as soon as they played the national anthem with the flag waving, then came Mighty Mouse. <laughs> Here I come to save the day. <laughs> My parents didn't have to worry about it. Because Mighty Mouse was the good guy and all the other guys were the evil guys and the good guy always won. But we, today, society's different. There's all kinds of evil, subtle things going on that the devil is behind and that antichrist spirit is behind and he's going after our children. Above all, guard against giving into a spirit of fear. Fear is the manifestation and indication that the devil and his demons are near. I'll say it again. Fear is a manifestation and an indication that the devil and his demons are near. Faith, peace, and love are an indication that the Holy Spirit is on the scene. What will we yield to? What will we yield to? Finally, my brethren. Can we pass out the communion?
Going back to 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Thanks, Ray. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful, 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 unthankful. That is a sign of the end times. We need to guard against being unthankful. I said we need to guard against being unthankful. Allowing an unthankful spirit into our hearts and our minds has a dark, deep connection to being unholy. And the Bible says, He's, be ye holy for he is holy. This entitlement mentality is characterized by an unthankful spirit. I want you to listen while they're handing it out. This entitlement mentality is characterized by an unthankful spirit. Stay thankful. Never feel that you deserve something from anyone. I've said, never feel you deserve something from anyone. Our society today is characterized by the attitude that everyone, the government, my employer, everyone and everything owes me something. It's wrong. We live in a world where people are unthankful, they're ungrateful, they're unappreciative, and they feel entitled to everything. My son Jake, he calls, he calls it, he's, and he says... He, he, he even, he just says, it's my generation. He said, it's the selfie generation. He said, it's the selfie generation. What's it all about? <laughs> Seriously. And then we're going to post it so everybody can, mm -hmm. it's all about me. Yeah. Don't get upset with me. It's the selfie are we in the selfie generation? I'm sure there's only a handful of hands in here that have never done a selfie. Because I've done one. And then I'm like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> to put it out there for the whole world to see. But come on. It's all about me. Society has taken a hard turn toward that mindset, and we need to guard against it. Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest in his kingdom, then be the servant of all. Be the least. Be the servant of all. Amen? You want to, you want to find great satisfaction in this life? than just serve other people. One of my friends, one of the greatest men that I have ever met, uh, passed away this last week. I went to his viewing, and I, I mean, this man, all he did was serve. He was very successful, but all he did was serve. He gave his time to everything. I mean, and his obituary is this long of things that he just volunteered his time and just served people and serve society. We've lost that mindset. I remember when I was a kid, I was in the, in the first or second grade, and John F. Kennedy, who was a Democrat, gave a speech, and he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That party ain't the same today. That should be the mindset of the church. What can we do for people? Now, what can they do for me? Or they owe me this. Are you listening? We need to guard against this mentality. Above all else, guard your heart and be quick to repent of it. God has made us many precious promises. God has bestowed many benefits on us. The Bible is very plain. Psalm 103, it says he forgives all of our sins 
and heals all our diseases. It says, for, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Don't forget them. He forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. It's twofold. We can receive all of these benefits through faith, but make no mistake, you didn't earn it. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. But thank God, we have one who knew no sin, who was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I'm telling you, when I stand before the Lord that day, I'm resting my case right there. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord, I trusting in your righteousness. I'm trusting in the sacrifice you made. And I, I, that's, I got nothing else to say. All I can say is, Lord, I'm trusting in you. Your blood. And he'll, Jesus will just look at the Father and say, my blood was more than enough. He'll say, this one has faith in my blood, Father. And the Father will say, enter into the joy of your Lord. Are you listening? We have something to shout about. The whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. But my brother and sister, we've got the word of God and we've got the Holy Ghost. We've got some of heaven to go to heaven in. Amen? And we are, we are called to live far above this world's standards. God, it's not the, I, we need a good economy. I pray for a good economy. But it's not the economy that meets your needs. It's our God that meets your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen? I hate it that gas is at almost $4 a gallon. But I'm going to tell you this. I know I just like, God, you said you'd meet my needs. Well, you better adjust your lifestyle and not travel so much. No? God's going to take care of it. So, you know, I want to get agitated and complain when I get to the gas pumps, but I just look and low. God, thank you. Thank you that you meet my needs according to your riches and glory. And I might say, you know, Lord, I might have a little more to give towards you if you'd lower me. <laughs> I know none of you talk that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are those days when Holy Spirit is being poured out in a greater measure and a greater way. Because God has given us his word. He said when the enemy comes in like a flood, I'll lift up a standard against him. And the enemy has come in, but I'm telling you what, like a flood. I said like a flood. In fact, the Lord told me this morning, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, they'll not just come another wave of my spirit, they'll come a tsunami of my spirit. Like this word has never seen. And we will ride that wave into glory. We'll ride that wave to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Woo! Hallelujah. These are those days when the devil and his demons are ramping up their activities because they know the time is short. And they are conditioning society for their evil plans and their evil schemes and their evil purposes. They're conditioning society for a one world rule and for the Antichrist. And much of the world and some Christians have had their minds blinded through satanic deception. But my brother and sister, that's not us. There is a remnant that God is raising up that have not bowed their knee to Baal. 
I said there's a remnant that God is raising up that have not bowed their knee to this society and all the pressures and demands of it. We have said there's a better way. And we're walking in it. Amen? Will you join me? I'm asking you. Will you be part of that remnant? Today. Today as we partake of communion. Let's judge ourselves in any area that we've been unthankful. In any area that we've allowed that attitude, that entitlement attitude of society. In any area that we've allowed any of those characteristics in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, to come into our lives, judge them and repent of them.